ever considered that we are living in a unique time, that something world-changing is about to happen, and that it might concern you? If so, you're in the right place. Keep listening, and you'll hear thought-provoking views behind the news that point to a new and better future for all. Many people now sense that humanity is not alone. So consider this. If the Christ or the Buddha walked among us today as modern men, would we recognize them? What would they be saying? And most importantly, would we listen? Every Sunday on this program, Share International Radio will examine extraordinary events that are unfolding behind the headline news. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. And now, welcome to this week's show. Welcome indeed. This is Diana Gold Holland, and I'm welcoming you to our show, Share on the Air Radio, where we have a very special program this week. Because according to uh, many people in the know about what is called the three spring festivals, three uh, full moon, the three full moons in spring uh, are. Uh, a very uh, special time in the year. Esotericists uh, claim that this is actually the high point of the spiritual year for all of humanity, and we are just now a couple of days past the full moon in Taurus, which is literally the highest point of the high point of the spiritual year. So we are going to be talking about the legend and the festival of Waysac. I'm not going to clue you in on Waysac yet because that's the uh, topic of our whole show. So let me right away, um, oh, wait a minute, let me start by giving the premises of our show for our um, listening audience who may be new to Share on the Air Radio. Um, we contend that humanity is not alone, in, especially at this very difficult time of transition for the planet, that humanity is not alone, and that among us, emerging now onto the world scene, are very great teachers, perfected masters, as a matter of fact, who are great scientists, who are the most advanced spiritually uh, of our earthly breth brethren, the masters of wisdom, emerging now onto the world scene, and at their head, the Lord Maitreya. Let me spell that for you, M-A-I-T-R-E-Y-A. -E uh, and the Lord Maitreya uh, is actually the one awaited, the expected one, of all the great religions. So the Christians uh, expect him as the Christ, the um, Muslims as the Imamadi, the Jews as the Messiah, um, Krishna for the uh, Hindus, uh, sorry, the Buddha for the Buddhists. Uh, he is Maitreya Buddha, as they correctly named him, and also Krishna in the Hindu religion. He is indeed the representative of the Godhead, the love aspect of God here on the planet at this time, and drawing in tremendous cosmic energies that uh, are able to assist and, and help us. So these are our premises, and um, Maitreya and the Buddha both play a very, very special role at this time of the full moon of Vaisak. And uh, let us let me introduce my guest, um, Josephine Harrison, right now, and uh, so we can get on with, with telling you about this, this wonderful uh, time. We are, in effect, just after the full moon of Taurus, and so the energies that will be talked about during this show are still um, reverberating through the, the ethers and are still pouring out their great effect on us. So um, that's a, an immense blessing as well. A uh, couple of words on Josephine, Josephine Harrison, my guest. She is a longtime student of the Ageless Wisdom teachings and the author of two children's books that portray these teachings under the guise of fairy tales for all ages. Josephine is also a trained and gifted artist who has exhibited her unique form of textile collage art internationally. Uh, actually, you can see one of Josephine's textile collages on our Facebook page, if you care to check that out. Uh, our Facebook page, Share on the Air 
uh, Radio North America. And that particular collage is a depiction of the events that we will be talking about today at the WESAC Festival. This is Josephine's second visit to our show. I interviewed her previously on children and a new approach to education. And today, as I mentioned, she returns to talk about the WESAC Festival, literally the high point of the spiritual year, and the legend associated with it. So, Josephine, welcome to the show. Thank you, Diana. Lovely to be on it again. Um, perhaps yes, it's I good should to have be- you. Yeah. Uh, perhaps I should st- start with uh, explaining the, why full moons are so significant in the spiritual year. Each time uh, there's a full moon, the light from the sun shines more brightly on the earth because of its reflective light from the moon. And that's why we have also have problems sometimes with people who are unstable. It causes them to be worse at the time of the full moon. But also at that time, the full moon light can cause extraordinary good things to happen as well. The light shines on brighter on the darkness and more brightly on the light as well. So that aspect is truly important. And at the spring festivals, um, so we are told when we read about this and when we study astrology and astronomy, that these times, um, these three spring festivals are when the light is the brightest. We have the festival of... Okay, let me me just... Oh, I was just going to say, let me mention that these spring full moons normally happen in April, May, and June. Sometimes, you know, you get two moons in one month, etc., but most usually um, it's, it's uh, April, May, and June. Now, let's, let's go into that, uh, Josephine. Please explain the, the three festivals to us. Um, the, the festival, the spring festival is... Uh, as we can see it illustrated in the, the spring and all the plants and everything coming to life at that time. So the energy, and also in the Christian, it's the most important of the Christian festivals, the risen Christ, the light of the Christ and the love of the Christ um, uh, rises up uh, into the world again and is very potent at that time and then the and of course festival... this is commemorated in the uh, sorry this is commemorated of course in the in the christian feast of easter the feast of resurrection exactly. and this is indeed Absolutely. the first yeah it's the first of the full of uh, the spring full moons let's talk about the second one now um josephine the taurus the, full moon the taurus full moon is the full moon of Asia, the full moon of the Buddha, and uh, it celebrates the birth and the death of uh, the Buddha. And the Wesak um, legend, which I will talk about, is part of that celebration. And the Taurus full moon is um, known as the most powerful of all the full moons, the energy at that time pouring into the... uh, Onto the, into the planet is quite extraordinary. And we are seeing it at this time with the extreme things that are happening, which seem so bad, but they are waking us up to what's really needed to happen in the world. So um, yeah. that's the tour. And then the next full moon, Diana, is that's the next one comes in June and that is the festival of humanity when the energy from the buddha is given to the christ has been given to the christ and the christ then it manifests through maitreya the christ into humanity and right through until the end of the year Mm-hmm. So that's, now let's make it clear to let's make it clear to our our audience that um, 
although the term Buddha and Christ would remind people very much of, of um, the standard religious practices and, and beliefs and whatnot, um, this is, this, these ceremonies are actually the hallmark of, of the new uh, world religion, of, an, of a new presence in the world of, of um, these, these, these great energies. So they're not, it, it's not about dogma, it's about energy. And it's it's not really about religion, because um, as I said, Maitreya comes as the representative of all the religions, and also of no religion as well, of those who do not have any religious beliefs. He is a world teacher, as they are known, for uh, for the coming age, the age of Aquarius. So this is not a new form of edu of religion that um, anyone is trying to quote cram down anybody's throat. And I would like to remind you as well that our show is meant for your uh, your uh, entertainment and your information mostly. Uh, we are not here to convert anybody to anything in any way. We simply present the information that we have as um, a source of uh, very good news, as a matter of fact, to you, our listeners, if you take it on. But uh, we do not um, expect you to um, a adopt any that, religious no. attitude to this. Yeah, for your yes, Josephine, I think there was a bit of a... The, I'm sorry, Josephine, there was a glitch on the line here. You were saying, as do I most times, that we are presenting this information for your consideration only. To find out more about this whole story www.share-international.org Stay with us. On the other side of the break, we will be talking about the Festival of Waisak, the sacred yearly event that takes place in the Valley of Waisak at the foot of Mount Kailash, Tibet. See you then. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Spiritual. Metaphysical. Green living. Psychic. Alternative healing. Life coaching. Do any of these or similar terms apply to your business or cause? If so, you are in a niche market with a very specific audience. Conscious Gate PR is the world's leading conscious public relations agency. With a global reach of over 4 million and growing, we offer comprehensive media campaigns to our targeted market. Learn more at ConsciousGatesPR.com. Conscious Marketing for Conscious Minds. Join Vibe Nation radio host, international psychic medium, Carrie Turcotte, as she guides her listeners to rediscover themselves by accessing the keys of knowledge that already exist within. Each week's show is divinely orchestrated to intertwine with the universal energies, allowing the listeners to go deeper within. At the end of each show, Carrie will tap into the energies of the listeners and give a message from spirit about the upcoming week. If you really want to get to know who you truly are, join Carrie each Monday at 3 p.m. on Vibe Nation Radio. Want to help build the coming golden age? Want to experience the Aquarian energies of love, light, and power? Transmission meditation is a simple way for you and two or more friends to do just that and accelerate your own spiritual growth at the same time. Check out Transmission Meditation at ShareOnTheAirRadio.org. That's ShareOnTheAirRadio.org. Hey everybody, Rachel Ray here. Nothing brings a bigger smile to my face than cooking up a big meal for the whole family and lots of friends. But there's not enough room at my table for the 17 million kids in our country who struggle with hunger. That's why the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks collect surplus food to give hope to hungry kids. But they can't do it without your help. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. Welcome back. You're listening to Share on the Air Radio. My guest today is Josephine Harrison, and we are talking about the Festival of Waysack, which has just taken place um, within the last 48 or 72 hours in the Valley of Waysack at the foot of Mount Kailash in Tibet. So 
Uh, and while before we begin talking about it, I would have you know that there are this this legend and the the knowledge of this festival is not new and it's not um, um, claimed by by our show or our our parent organization Share Hyphen International um, Magazine. No, sorry, I'm conf confusing the website and the magazine. Share International Magazine, that share is in sharing. Many, many, many organizations know of the legend of Waysack, and as a matter of fact, I uh, refer you to Google. If you Google the legend of Waysack, it will come up under um, many, many names, and you will be able to um, read it yourself and um, recreate that very special magic. So, um, first of all, Josephine, why don't you tell us a bit about the significance of Mount Kailash in all of this and the Waysack Valley? Um, th this legend happens in northeastern Tibet, about a f 500 miles from Lhasa to the east and on, in the northern foothills of the Himalayas. And there's this mountain called Mount Kailash, which is sacred to the Hindus, Buddhists, and um, all over Asia. And since ancient times, it's been a place of pilgrimage. And there's a large lake near the mount, which pilgrims wash themselves in before they prostrate themselves round the mountain. One, one body length at a time, they literally lie down and ask for the cleansing of their bodies. And at the time of the, the Wesak, this there is, in fact, a, a valley there at the foot of Mount Kailash, a bottleneck-shaped valley which has a stream running down one side of it and grass at the base of it and then trees on the mountainside. And at the base of that valley, the pilgrims come from, like I said, all over Asia. It's a long pilgrimage and all the monks and priests from all the monasteries and so on, come there, and they bring their own water to um, celebrate this extraordinary happening. At the head of the valley, at the bottleneck of the valley, the northern point, there is a flat rock, and on that rock, it is said, so the legend goes, there is this crystal bowl of water. And at the actual moment of the full moon, a speck is seen in the sky, a tiny speck. All the pilgrims are at the other end of the valley. In the middle of the valley, there are um, the masters of wisdom, what Christians would call the saints at Josephine? This tiny speck. I believe. You believe, Diana? I'm just I'm about sorry, to Josephine. About... There, yeah, there was, a, there was a break in the sound. And so uh, oh, would you dear. start again about the, yes, the, the sound went out for about 10 seconds there. So please, uh, um, we were talking about the uh, Masters of Wisdom in front of the... Um, the um, oh, rock with the crystal the rock, yeah. crystal bowl. The water is there. At the moment of the full moon, there's a tiny speck seen in the sky. And gradually it comes closer and closer, and one sees this remarkable form of the Buddha with his hand, right hand up in blessing, and his aura, which is absolutely extraordinary. And he blesses the bowl of water. And during this process of him coming in the, as a tiny speck in the sky to start with, the masters and saints and all the 
beings that look after this planet have been doing a, a rhythmic ritual, forming triangles and stars and chanting a rhythmic sound. And he ble the Buddha blesses the bowl of water and then gradually disappears back to Shambhala. He comes from Shambhala, the center where the will of God is known. And then the Christ who is Maitreya, the Christ who is at the head of this um, ancient, of these ancient rituals, takes the water from the bowl and hands it to each of the great beings who are there in the center of light. And then the each of them, as in our, our communion ceremony, in a Christian and in other other religions, each of them takes the water as a blessing and a purification for them. At the end of the um, that happening, and the Buddha has receded back, and then what happens is all the pilgrims who have brought their water with them, and that water has been blessed as well, and the priests and so on, they all drink the water, prostrate themselves towards the rock, and then all very silently and gradually they leave the valley. And that, that is briefly the story of the legend of the Wessex. Some people experience it in dream state, and the others come from far and wide in Asia. Um, I have met more than one person who has actually experienced it in a dream. Um, Alice Bailey, who some of you may be familiar with, she experienced it in a dream state, and then seven years later, she had the same experience, exactly the same experience of the um, actual happening of the legend. And C.W. Leadbeater in Masters and the Path, he um, employed a, a, a watercolorist to actually paint. He gave the watercolorist a description of what he saw, and the, the watercolorist did what he could to give that um, uh, visual scene of the Wessack. There was a group from Australia which tried to do a movie of it, and they weren't allowed to. They could, were allowed to show the valley on the movie and the pilgrims leaving the valley, but the actual experience of the Wessack, they weren't allowed to film. Right. Let me fill our listeners in a little bit on that. Um, let me fill our listeners in a little bit on that. The um, the producer of this movie uh, was called Albert Falzon, F-A-L-Z-O-N. If you look it up, um, you, it is possible to purchase this movie still. It was made in 1980. Oh, good. And, uh, Yes, people. I, I don't know if it's still available, but it's still listed as available. Uh, if you if you Google that, and um, I think the name of it is. Um, I don't remember. I did get uh, it and see. Travel, it. travel to the travel to the valley of Wesak. I have seen it. It's um, it's about an hour yeah, long, and as you it. say. It, it depicts the travel through Tibet and then the many of the the, um, the 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 very colorful hats on the Buddhist monks and all that kind of thing. But um, yes, hopefully it is still available. I think it may well be. And that's Albert uh, Falzon, F A L Z O N. The movie was made in 1980. Um, and it's I just wanted to was. clarify one term. Yes, I just wanted to clarify one term. You were saying, Josephine, that uh, the Buddha recedes again and returns to Shambhala. 
And um, yeah. just for our listeners, Shambhala is an etheric, it, it, it's, it is in the etheric plane, the planes above those solid planes that we know of as um, solid, liquid, and gaseous. There are four other planes of very, very subtler, extreme, you know, progressively even subtler matter, um, sometimes called the inner planes, most normally called the etheric planes. And there is a, a, a city called Shambhala. There are various spellings of that, so I won't uh, give any here. Uh, Shambhala um, is the, the central, um, how would you say it, Josephine, our central divine government, the custodians of the plan? Um, yes, the uh, custodians of the plan. That's very good, Diana. Yeah. And at their yeah, head the stands. Where the, yeah, mm -hmm. the center where the will of God is known. Right. And for those who have heard the term Sanat Kumara, he this is his residence in the etheric, and he he is the regent, the representative of God, uh, the highest representative of the Godhead uh, on this planet in incarnating the plan for this planet. So it's a very lofty place indeed. The uh, Buddha recedes there till the time of the next ceremony. And um, one other interesting point about this is according to the literature available, this ceremony from complete end, from when, when the Buddha is first seen as a speck and then disappears again, is eight minutes in length. Oh, that's so, good to know. Yes. Yes, and yeah. the aura is apparently that um, was given in the Masters on the Path. The coloring of the aura and so on in that picture apparently is the same as in ancient frescoes of the Buddha. So ah, on that I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's I'm sure our, our most of our listeners are familiar with the term aura, which is the etheric light surrounding uh, surrounding our being. Uh, when we come back on the other side of the break, we will be talking about what the significance is for humanity of, of this this meeting of east and west at the time of the Buddha, especially of the greater proximity to the masters of wisdom as the free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on the Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Want to help humanity and the planet? Transmission meditation is a simple but powerful way for you and two or more friends to do just that and dramatically accelerate your own spiritual growth. You can read the book on transmission meditation free online. Visit shareontheairradio.org for details. That's shareontheairradio.org. Shareontheairradio.org. My name is Dale Pazinski, and this is how I live United. I volunteer with United Way, helping the homeless in my community by teaching computer skills and helping them build a basic resume to save on their very own USB drive. It's huge when somebody says, hey man, that job that you helped me apply for, I got it. My name is Dale Pazinski. I help people achieve financial independence. So I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Welcome back. This is Share on the Air Radio, and today we are discussing the Festival of Waysac, which has newly happened for this year um, in the Waysac Valley. Now, one of the main things I find important about this this particular high point of the of the year, Josephine, is that it is the opportunity for humanity to sweep forward as a group on our on our spiritual journey. And the um, it's it's a magnetic invocation of mankind to these energies of the Buddha, and in that meeting there is a chance for us to 
participate into this thrust forward into a new fresh start, which at this particular moment corresponds with the beginning of the age of Aquarius. So I think it's very exciting and very important to talk about the age of Aquarius and um, um, yes, I agree. fill our viewers, our listeners in on that. Okay, yes, um, tell us about it. You there? Go, go ahead, Josephine. Yes, yes. Um, we have just come out of the, or gradually come out of the age of Pisces, when the energy of the constellation of Pisces has influenced the um, the Earth and humanity since the time of Jesus. It's a rhythm of evolution that every 2,000 years the sun moves into another um, constellation. And Pisces, the energy of Pisces, gave us the great gift, gave humanity the great gift of individuality. We have, during this time of 2,500 or so approximate years, used that energy and become as we evolve, extraordinarily um, gifted, each of us in our own right, according to our intelligence. Another aspect of this is that if you believe in reincarnation, the whole thing makes more sense, at least it does to me. So life after life we evolve. And we may have been back several times in the past 2,000 years, and there have been many um, civilizations as the planet has gradually evolved. And now we are moving into the age of Aquarius, and we, it hel it's helpful to be aware that the energy of this age is rather different from Pisces, it's the a you could describe it as the age of the group. So instead of this incredibly overdone competitive use of the energy of Pisces, which has given us this blessing of our individuality, but we seem to have taken it to extremes. Now, as we move into Aquarius, we're, we are feeling that desire to work together as groups. And what I see is that as we really wake up to this and we start giving our extraordinary individuality to be part of a group, how much more extraordinary this whole planet will become in the next 2,000 years. When you add to that the purpose of this solar system, which we're in now, the previous one was developing the intelligence of um, humanity, which has been quite remarkable, gone to extremes. Now we, in this solar system, its destiny is to manifest lo the love aspect when and during the age of Aquarius we expect those two aspects to come together and when we see when we all see our responsibility each one of us responsibility in working together to make that happen this greed and competitiveness will die because our, we will experience within ourselves the need to make sure that everybody expresses them, the, their whole individuality in a group, as a group. So the whole of life will not have this loneliness and all the other awful things that are happening today. And we see it waking up in young people now, these huge group demonstrations all over the world, and this 
development of the intelligence of humanity, which is bringing forth this ability to communicate with each other worldwide. And that gives people confidence that they don't feel so alone when they work towards the solving of the problems of the world and not the greed. It seems as though we are going backwards, perhaps, but when people don't wake up, the light throws itself more brightly on the darkness of what's happening and the good that's happening, and people see the contrast more, which makes them more move towards what is needed in the world today more. So it's really an extraordinary time we're living in, this beginning of another 2,000 years of energy on the planet. But we are experiencing extremes and climate change and what we've done to the earth, which is our home, like our own personal home. The earth is our home too, and we need to love the earth just the same as we love having our own home. Because if the age of Aquarius should show us how the earth is the home of the whole of humanity. So when we abuse the earth, we are abusing our home and causing the earth is also a living being. One day, we as individual souls may um, embrace and ourselves be responsible for a planet rather than just a little individual physical body like we think that's all we are. Mm -hmm. We're so much more I, I think that. we're seeing a lot of that happening already, Josephine. You know, with all of so. these horrible political and economic problems that are going on in the world. It's it's really hard to keep remaining asleep in the face of all this. And I find Ooh. more and more people are reaching out to other and uh, others and and developing compassions. You know, even even taking pure strangers into their homes, the, the refugees, etc., yeah. because it's simply the right thing to do. And as Absolutely. you said, the, pe the young people today are, are responding to the energies, and we are even being given tools to help with this, this global synthesis. I view the Internet as an early and very good tool for this unification. Uh, we don't need the mainstream news to be telling us anything anymore. We have cell phones. We can film it. We can, we can shine a light yeah. on any corner of the world and things happening there. And people are becoming more and more responsible for doing that. And at the same time, we have these great teachers in our midst, these great um, world figures who are emerging and who, despite all of their uh, advancement spiritually uh, are literally serving in these areas of disaster and and great misery. They are there in person helping out and and trying to ease the suffering of mankind on a very very individual scale in that way. So um, absolutely, it's it's really a very important time, and. Um, we're, we're really lucky ab about this. I, I wanted to go into one particular aspect of this, Josephine, that our listeners may not know about, and that is the the new um, this this new um, way of of coming into the, the approach to the Godhead that links the East and the West, um, the science of of evocation and invocation and how that is a transformation again from the Piscean age the age past to the the age of Aquarius the age of brotherhood now dawning tell us about the science of evocation and invocation well we evoke the higher and we evoke we invoke the higher energies and I think you could tell us more about that than me. You've caught me there, Diana. Oh, okay, um, no problem. Um, 
Yeah, let me yeah, let me just get it started here. In in the age of of Pisces, or as we uh, what 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 we are more um, used to in the age of Pisces is the act of prayer. And and prayer is usually a request, you know, bring me this, give me that, help me with such and such other. It is um, it is invoking the the love energy. Uh, there is nothing uh, wrong with prayer. Don't get me wrong; that's not what I'm saying. But prayer in prayer invokes. It seeks to bring to us the um, w- whatever it is we're asking for. So it's basically a form of supplication. The um, the science of evocation, linking invocation and evocation in the New Age, will be one, uh, it, 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 it operates at a different level in that we invoke, we invite in the energies of the Buddha, for example, of, of the world teacher, of these great um, beings. We invoke or invite that energy in, but at the same time, because of the different approach, we are evoking it. And that means we are drawing it to us. The, the energies that we are um, contacting in this new way respond by cosmic law to our invocation. So is that a bit of a way to start, Josephine? <laughs> yeah, um, yes, that, uh, that, that uh, draws I, I us into... It meant... Yeah, it's just yeah. something about um, the terminology you caught me out then. The, okay. I, well, that listen. brings us to... That brings us to transmission meditation. meditation in our last yeah, segment, we'll... which is a wonderful new practice for the New Age. So stay with us and hear about that. Share on the air. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Share International Magazine is unique in the world today. It draws connections that make sense between headline news and spiritual changes unfolding now on a global scale and explains the forces driving those changes. It may be the message of hope you have been waiting for. Investigate for yourself at shareontheairradio.org. That's shareontheairradio.org. Shareontheairradio.org. It only takes a minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. And you can do it at doihaveprediabetes.org. But you're probably not going to, are you? Kids, work, listening to the radio. You're busy, which is great because busy people can't get prediabetes. Oh my, I read that wrong. (laughs) They can. Should have worn my glasses. So visit doihaveprediabetes.org and take a short test because prediabetes can be reversed. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. Great. We're glad to be back with you. If you were listening to the commercials, even with half an ear, you will have heard of the magazine that uh, puts out the information um, that, that we or that we inspire ourselves by. 
uh, in, in preparing our shows and in bringing you various facets of the emergence of the world teacher and the masters of wisdom. Let me give you that website again, www.share, as in sharing, share-international.org. And if you're brand new to this story, or even if you just want to review it, um, go to our Facebook page, where we, uh, the Share on the Air radio Facebook page, and there you will find a link to the 50 most um, often asked questions. The FAQs, the 50 most often asked questions, are all there um, in a very interesting summary to the material. I think you'll you'll be very uh, fascinated by seeing that. And um, just as we go into this, and, and so you'll see that on our, our Facebook page, Share on the Air Radio, and you will also see there Josephine's collage of the, um, the WESAC Festival, and there you see the representation of this wonderful aura of the Buddha, uh, which is quite magnificently done. We're going to do a little uh, something a little different with the last segment because we're going to talk about uh, transmission meditation and we're going to talk about uh, the great invocation which triggers it. And then at the end of the show, we are going to do a mini transmission uh, again and within the energies of, of um, the, the WASAC celebration. We will recite the great invocation and then for whatever time is left, we will remain in silence and invite you to form a group, form a group of our listeners together today and participate in this meditation. Of course, uh, there is no, um, you're not forced to do this, you don't have to do it, but I just want to explain that there will be a, a time of silence at the end of the program. It will simply um, fade out, go into the next program, but for that blank space. We are not gone. We are here together as a group in um, in these great energies of the great invocation. So Josephine, let's start by talking about transmission and uh, its role in, in um, bringing in the new age. Yes, meditation has increased enormously um, in, I don't know, know that popularity is the best word, but there's an enormous amount of interest now, not only in the East, but in the West also. And a huge number of people um, have their own individual uh, meditation. A group meditation, there's more energy can go through the group than just one person. It's um, transmission meditation is a meditation of service. It steps down um, the energies that we invoke, as Diana has described, through prayer and meditation. We invoke these energies and the um, masters of wisdom, the great beings overseeing us, they um, guide, guide these energies as to how much can go through you. If you're in a group, much more energy can be put through you than if, as an individual. And it's really necessary... Um, for us to be available as groups, just like we pray for um, change for something better. So as a group, the energies can be stepped down into various areas of the world by the masters through a group. More energy can be stepped down. If it all went to the world without a group of meditators, it could just blow a fuse, just like electricity. If you put too much electricity um, through the system, the fuse blows. If too much group energy comes from the master, a fuse can blow. But if there are a lot of uh, people in a, in a group, then, then more energy can go through. And this is the principle, not very well described. But this is the principle of transmission meditation. 
And there are group, small groups meet in people's houses all over the world now. It's an amazing network, quite ex extraordinary. I think, uh, I can't remember how many countries now, but it's quite remarkable. Over, I've been involved with this since the 1970s when I first heard a man by the name of Benjamin Krem speak in London. And it's just been quite extraordinary how this network has grown. And it's very easy, if you're moved in that direction, to become part of that network. I'm here in Vancouver in Canada. We have three or four small groups here that meet in people's homes every week in, um, here in Vancouver. And what we're going to do is to give you an experience of that type of group meditation use, using the Great Invocation, which Diana and I will say, and um, it invokes the light and love and will of, of um, the high, highest of God or divinity or whatever yeah. term you want to use. So, Josephine, uh, let me just hop in here with a couple of points for our readers. We talked about, you know, energy and blowing a fuse. Now, um, please do understand that there is no physical danger to you if you participate in transmission meditation. Uh, it is totally secure. The masters send through only as much energy as each person can can, abs can safely absorb. So total safety there. Um, we have another yeah. show on transmission itself called transmission a gift from the gods if you look that up in our archives you can hear the whole uh, show the other thing is that as these energies come in they are very powerful and so we are asked not to direct them we might think oh it's terrible what's going on in Yemen or what have you but maybe what needs to happen in those hot spots of the world is that energy be withdrawn and not directed there so we are Absolutely. asked to perform transmission as an act of service, and we, we simply serve as that step-down transformer, like with battery life, and let the masters send the energy to where it is most needed. And that, you know, it might be sent at some particular point to um, finding a cure for something. It's not necessarily all political and social problems. There might be some breakthrough in the understanding of environmental energy that could be made. So they know exactly, they are master scientists and know exactly where to direct it. Um, we're getting close to the end of our time, and I want people to have this little experiment of experience, rather, of, of transmission, Josephine. So let us um, talk about the Great Invocation very, very quickly. The Great Invocation is recited as the, it, it's like ringing the buzzer to let the masters know that that particular group is, as always, on a regular basis, uh, ready to transmit at such and such time and such and such place. So we recite the great invocation to invoke the energies of the masters in transmission. The, by cosmic law, these, these energies are evoked from them and come to us. Um, so it's just uh, like an opening buzzer to start the flow of the energy. There's more on the history of all that. You can find it out later on your own, as well as um, going to our Facebook page for the legend of WASAC, which you can read the uh, 50 questions on the story of um, the emergence of the world teacher and um, a peek at Josephine's um, um, collage. So, um, Josephine, um, it's very hard to say it in perfect synchronicity, so I think I will let you recite the invocation for us, and then we will go into silence till the end of the show in transmission meditation as the Share on the Air radio mini transmission group for today. Okay. Please lead um, us through it. In silence, from the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love 
within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. 